A portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's time to talk about AI. For a very brief period of human history, we had the privilege of imagining a future where robots roamed the battlefield, usually at our expense, but when we wanted to, we could close that box and remember that is not the reality that we live in. That period, sadly, is over. The term for these systems is LAWS, Lethal Autonomous Weapon Systems, a special class of weapon system that uses sensor suites and computer algorithms to independently identify a target and employ an onboard weapon system to engage and destroy it without any human control of the system. This should we use it, should we not conversation feels like it's been happening for decades, but the time to make this decision is now. The US recently announced the Replicator Initiative to deploy autonomous systems at scale of multiple thousands within the next 18 to 24 months. This comes at a time of turmoil for the AI community following the battle over control of OpenAI, whose leaders appeared split over whether the firm is taking sufficient account over the dangers of the technologies they are developing. And just last week, officials from China and the United States met to discuss a related issue, potential limits on the use of AI in decisions about deploying nuclear weapons. We are at an inflection point for humanity, where we are walking the line between what our intelligence can produce and what our wisdom can condone. But what do we do? Do we embrace it and get there first, or do we hold off and bear the consequences of someone else getting there first? Welcome to Pandora's Wager. When Prometheus stole fire from the gods, Zeus took vengeance by presenting Pandora to Prometheus's brother, Epimetheus. Pandora was left with a box in her care and warned not to open it. But as curiosity got the better of her and the lid began to open, sickness, death and the evils of the world slipped out. Though she hastened to close the container quickly, the only thing left behind was hope. Pandora's wager assumes we know of Pandora's fate, and now when we are presented with a box of untold possibilities, the question becomes, do we go first and hope to capture some positive, or do we work together as a society to make sure that box is never opened, knowing that all it takes is one person to crack the lid? We've already seen some of the less severe consequences of these explorations already. Back in 2018, the development of machine learning and AI to synthesize CVs of job applicants led Amazon to build and later discover its algorithm automatically filtered women out of the running for tech staff, as its training data was based upon past successful applicants, the majority of which were men. In seeking an impartial judge of candidates to find better employees, it had inadvertently learned to mirror and compound the current societal imbalances we see today. Amazon, it is reported, has shelved the project. With the advent of computer vision capability, your anonymity in a crowd is now a thing of the past. In the UK, you can actually be stopped and questioned by police officers for simply refusing to show your face to a facial recognition camera, which is worrying considering when the Metropolitan Police used facial recognition at the 2017 Notting Hill Carnival, the system was wrong about 98% of the time, falsely telling officers on 102 occasions it had spotted a suspect. In China, AI-assisted cameras have been used to monitor individuals' emotions in public and assign them a social score. AI can get scary quickly, and these are troubling patterns, but ultimately not really game over scenarios. But statistically, the more boxes that we go to open, the higher the likelihood we come across something that we just can't control. What happens when we come across boxes with big red flashing lights on them, things like autonomous systems capable of engaging with targets without human intervention? Do we come together collectively as a society and refuse to move forward, or do we dive in not fully knowing the consequences? We'll answer that, but first I have to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is my absolute favorite web building platform. Last week, we announced our new venture capital fund to support scientists building breakthrough technologies that do good in the world, improving the health of people and of planet. We built out our framework of the website in about two days, from members areas, portfolios, to news section. Squarespace gives you incredibly powerful tools to quickly build out really sophisticated websites and designs. It gives you a fast and easy easy to maintain and great looking internet presence, which means you get to spend time delivering the work you actually need to do, not maintaining a website. And all of this comes without compromising on quality or the credibility of the site as your platform for your message and your mission. 
It's really rare that I can endorse a product so wholeheartedly, but Squarespace is the tool that I have turned to time and time again and use incredibly frequently. If you are in the market for a website, I could not recommend more checking out www.squarespace.com. And if you want to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain, use the code DrBenMiles. Thank you Squarespace for existing. Now, back to the video. The fate of the AI revolution might not be decided in the halls of governments or UN buildings. It might be set loose just to circumvent a simple irritation, poor signal. You've probably seen these videos or ones like them from the conflict in Ukraine. Don't worry, I'm not gonna play the full video. But vast numbers of these drones controlled by pilots in the field have been used to drop munitions on targets from far outside of harm's way. However, many of these systems lose contact with their operators during flight due to radio jamming or obstructed signal or just going out of range, opening up the idea of a failsafe. Maybe these systems should be able to pilot and engage with targets of their own accord, supported by an AI system following some rules of engagement. The concept of autonomous weapons isn't new. Landmines which detonate automatically have been used since the Civil War. The United States has missile systems that relies on radar sensors to autonomously lock onto and hit targets once fired. When we're talking about even more capable autonomous systems, it's not difficult to imagine any number of negative outcomes associated with them. In fact, we don't even have to. Plenty of movies have already been made hypothesizing these end of world events. But let's take a look at a counterexample of the importance of keeping a human in the loop of these sorts of decisions. On the night of September 26th, 1983, Stanislav Petrov was on duty at the command center for the Soviet Union nuclear early warning system. During a period of high tension between the Soviet Union and the United States, just weeks after the Soviet military had shot down Korean Airlines Flight 007, the system reported a missile launch from the United States, followed by five more. According to the system, these missiles were heading toward the Soviet Union. The expected response of this sort of attack would be nuclear retaliation. But despite the system's warning, Petrov decided not to raise the alarm. His reasoning was that a real American first strike would involve hundreds of simultaneous missile launches, not just five. It was just a hunch, but maybe the satellite system reliability was in question. Petrov's intuition was right, and although he wasn't recognized for averting nuclear war until after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the incident highlighted the risk of false alarms in the nuclear command chain, and it emphasized the crucial role of human judgment in the decision-making process. Would an AI system have made the same decision? Would AI-controlled systems in the future make the use of lethal force more likely during wartime, since the military launching them wouldn't be immediately putting their own soldiers at risk? And could this lead to further unnecessary escalation? Around the dangers of AI in general, the message from many in the tech sector has been portrayed as largely cautionary. But for some, it's more straightforward. Cleo Abrams did an interview recently with ex-Google CEO Eric Schmidt, where he said this. A pause would give time for our competitors, which starts with China, to catch up. At the moment, the US is in a very strong position. We have all of the top models, we have the majority of the researchers, we have the majority of the hardware, we have the majority of the data that's being used. That's not going to be true forever, but this is a critical time for us to build this technology in American values, liberal values, not authoritarian values. And actually, if we dig into some of those statements from the tech bros of Silicon Valley, we find that their actions echo this idea, even if the words they're putting out into the world don't. We saw hundreds of experts caution us against this accelerating pace of AI development, signing an open letter to pause the development of AI. But in the background, if you look closer, this was almost simultaneous with $10 billion of cash and compute funneling in from Microsoft into OpenAI. And similarly, Elon's call for a six month slowdown of AI development seems to have serendipitously ended with the announcement of his own AI company. These actions raise questions about whose interests are really being prioritized, or if we are living through a tragedy of the creative commons. The military's approach, at least, appears to be much clearer. In the Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks keynote address that announced the Replicator initiative, Hicks stated, Replicator is meant to help the US overcome the PRC's biggest advantage, which is mass. More ships, more missiles, more people and increasingly legal scholars are noticing that the US is moving to a more vague set of restrictions around the limitations of AI in automated engagement and use of force. Their opinion seems to be very much, get there first. 
And this isn't to say that if we get there, we have to realize the negative possibilities of our newfound capabilities. For many technologies, even those originally designed for the theater of war, we have a pretty good track record of largely not using them, from tear gas and blinding lasers to nuclear weapons. So maybe this will be the same where the threat of this effect is enough to dissuade their use and aggression. With all this concern, the obvious question is, could we stop AI even if we wanted to? And I think the answer is no. AI is a unique concern for Pandora's wager. It replicates and evolves very quickly and easily, and it's finding its way into almost every industry around us, where many advanced technologies require rare or expensive materials only possible to collect through significant industrial effort. An AI code base is more or less just a copy paste away. Yes, it's slightly more complicated than that, but at home or offline or on your own computer, it could be completely undetectable. Pre-trained systems can even be downloaded and many have many times. Stable Diffusion is a powerful text to image program and at the center of a number of lawsuits at the moment. Even if those lawsuits succeed, the code will always be out there, copied, shared, and churning out memes. Instead, the answer might be to regulate governments and industries use of these technologies, just like we did for many other products. Like the digital camera, for instance, the sale of cameras isn't restricted, but the ability of police to place one in your home is. As I'm writing this script, the EU just announced its first landmark attempt at a framework for safe use of AI. It took about five years of research and debate, and this is the world's first comprehensive approach to regulation. Now, it's way too extensive to cover fully here, but let's take a look at a couple points I noticed that are worth knowing about. It suggests to keep some of those boxes firmly closed, in particular around certain creepy uses of AI, like emotion monitoring in the workplace or in schools, as well as prohibiting behavioral modification AI and social scoring systems. Interestingly, the uses for AI for research, hobby projects, and non-professional purposes will not be restricted in any discipline, allowing the field in theory to continue developing at the speed that it needs, but potentially undermining efforts to restrict creation of bad acting software capabilities. The major downside that I see is that this act will take two years to come into force, which is an age in AI development, and there will be new inventions and use cases obviously not covered. The bill has some amount of teeth to it, but fines of up to 7% of turnover might just be seen as the cost of doing business for an AI-only company. So far, I haven't seen any mention of the use of military technologies at all, and this isn't really being covered elsewhere either, and sadly there has been little international progress towards this, with significant opposition from countries including the UK, the US, Israel, and Russia. We have some societal questions, both big and small, to ask ourselves in the very near term. If we had known when social media companies were optimizing their addictive browsing that ruined our motivation and happiness, would we have acted to stop them? Or similarly, should we be banning children from using platforms like ChatGPT so they learn to critically analyze the world around them, rather than just regurgitate what an AI told them to say? As ChatGPT learns to speak back to us in real time, are we comfortable as individuals conversing with AI like a friend? Do we want to let our friends be made of code? AI in all of its forms and applications isn't the first and definitely won't be the last of these considerations for society, but I can't help but feeling that we are stepping too quickly away from a practicality instilled almost 80 years ago. Law 1. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Law 2. A robot must obey the orders given to it by a human being, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Law 3. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Yeah, I know. The three laws, you yeah perfect circle of protection. We have some very big questions to ask ourselves as a society in the very near term. That isn't to say I don't think we can get through, it is just to say we need to start having that conversation now. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.